boomerang. You do always come back. I've outfit Chan. Careful. You could puncture the hull of an Empire class Fire Nation battleship, leaving thousands to drown at sea because it's so sharp. And the Fire Nation, and I can't, what's, what is the lie? Where, where am I going? What's, who's, what's happening? And we'd be like, it's okay. Now I'm in the uncomfortable bracelets, okay? <laughs> the scar? What am I yelling? What? I'm gonna do what? Greatest earthbender in the world, and don't you two dunderheads ever forget it. Zuko, more than I fear you. My, oh, never mind. You're watching convention coverage. show called Avatar? <laughs> well, thank you for coming. This is uh, this is the most of us in one place, I think, since since the show ended. And I don't even know if all of us were in one place even during the show. So no, no, thank you for joining us and joining me. This is so freaking cool. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. It is an absolute pleasure to have those of you that are back, thank you for coming back. Those of you that are our show for the very first time, thank you so much for helping make our show what it is. We really love you. I know they love you. That's why you're here, right? Thank you very much, every single one of you. Um, what is your favorite Sokka one-liner in the show? Ooh. Ooh. Boomerang, you do always come back. <laughs> But um, I wanted to say, I know that some of you said that you haven't watched it all the way through, but Tales of Bossing Say in the tribute to Mako, I wanted to know what that felt like and in, um, in what it felt like to, to kind of lose him as a cast member, but also honor him through that episode. I feel like, Greg, you should take this yeah. one because you take have such Greg. great stories about this. Well, I mean, that is by far the... the what people ask me to do more than anything else is they ask me to sing that song. Mm. And it is the one thing that I absolutely, and I love fans, but it's the one thing that I absolutely will never do. And I do that for two reasons. Number one, I have received so much thanks to Mako Iwamatsu. Uh, and it's my way of honoring him and saying thank you for what you've done for me. I, I'm honoring your life and your legacy. And that's, that's the lofty sort of reason why I never sing it. Uh, but the, also, at a more mundane level, I never sing it because I'm not as good an actor as Mako was. <laughs> I know, I know. I mean, Mako, you get it. So Mako was nominated for an Oscar. He was nominated for a Tony. Mako was the real deal. He was a star. He was a great actor. And I don't want, I would not ever want to taint everyone's memory of the seminal moment in the show with me singing it. <laughs> You know, frankly, I just couldn't sing it as good. And, and that is why when people, when people ask me to sing the song, I say, absolutely, I will not sing it. I might have sang it in the shower a couple of times by myself. <laughs> and, you know, trust me, you, know, <laughs> you, you don't want to hear it, Even, especially after a couple of cocktails. By the way, this is excellent tea, by the way. Uh, it's a little bloody tea there. Thank you very much. So I, I never sing that song, but if people really press me and they say, no, please sing it, I say, okay, I won't sing that song. Instead, I'll sing this song, and please sing along with me if you know the song. I'm going to step back from the mic because it'll be loud. Here we go. One, two, three. It's a long, long way to Ba Sing Se, but the girls in the city all look so pretty. On Friday, I was talking with Uncle Iroh about the diverse lessons that the show taught me as a child that made me into the adult that I am today. With your character in consideration, what do you find is the most impactful lesson taught to the audience, the other characters, or yourself? I have a good one for this, for Katara. Um, I was actually thinking about this the other day, and it happens to be my favorite episode, was um, the episode where Katara encounters uh, bloodbending because I know it's so dark and for me like as a kid I remember like it, it you know those things where when you ha like experience something that's kind of new and it like makes you feel weird and you know it's an important thing as you're learning it and I remember being like something clicked in my brain with that lesson where I realized like you really can't control other people and like you can only control yourself and trying to control other people is not it, it's not good for anyone um, and so for me that was like a really amazing life lesson was to try to like really not even ever try to invest time in controlling or making other people do what you want them to do or manipulate them and just kind of only trying to control your own reaction and your own self so that was a, a big one for me 
Anybody else? Yeah, you're welcome, Dante. That's so, so head. Dante's crying, you guys. You can't see it, but Dante's crying hysterically up here. <laughs> no, I think my, my, the biggest lesson Zuko taught me was the uh, courage to change. I mean, so many characters that we know and love through all, all the shows we see, you know, they're good guys or bad guys. Or, and I came into the show thinking I was just going to be a bad guy, chasing these good guys around <laughs> and never catching them. <laughs> But I found out, as I'm watching the show now, that you know, Zuko didn't catch the Avatar, but other people did. And I found out what they all had in common. They had a net. <laughs> <laughs> they had a net. What? And nobody, not even you, uncle, told me to get a net. <laughs> Some things you must learn on your own. If I had a net, <laughs> boy, if I had a net. <laughs> but seriously. The courage to change, because Zuko really had to face himself, and, and with the help of Uncle and, and, and his friends, was able to change, and I think that's the, the biggest thing that we can kind of like learn. Uh, yeah. Thank you. And if, you're, if you have to catch an airbender, bring a net. <laughs> the pirates knew. There's some woman out there named Annette going, I'm right here. <laughs> I'm right here. What is your favorite episode in book three of Avatar? The Last Airbender. Oh, in book three. Oh, three. Wow. The oh. beach. Yeah. yeah. The beach. The beach, yeah. I think the beach is so great because I like backstory and origin stories in anything. And you get so much origin story there. It's humorous in a season that's very dark. And also you get to watch Azula flirt. I and it's so cringy. Yeah, it's so cringy. Try to flirt. Try, try to flirt. <laughs> that's a we sharp just... outfit, Chan. Careful. You can puncture the hull of an Empire class Fire Nation battleship, leaving thousands to drown at sea because it's so sharp. <laughs> we get to see even the great, scary Azula a little more human. Yes. Just yes. for a bit. And bikinis. <laughs> yes. And I mean, Ember Island players, you can't go wrong, too. It's your nice little pause. The pause before the finale, where we get to just have a moment. A moment of theater, right? Yeah. Before the, uh, it all ends. And, I and mean, people always they... ask me, what, who would you yeah. rather play in the show yeah. besides your own character? And I would say Katara, but then I got to play Katara. I was the actress who played Katara in the Ember Island players. Yeah. <laughs> you got to do it! They cast it perfectly. <laughs> Thank you for your so question. My question to whoever wants to answer is uh, if there was a memorable recording session you had during this series and why? I mean, honestly, I just have to say my favorite, one of my favorite things, because oftentimes it would be me and Dante and Jack recording all at once. And we recorded it pretty much like weekly. So it, you know, was like a huge part of our lives for years and years. But uh, my favorite thing was Dante. Dante would get so worked up with some of like the bigger <laughs> <laughs> the bigger speeches where he would just get so into the character and he would be really acting to the mic and then he would be off the page and he wouldn't know what was going on and he'd be like, and the Fire Nation and I can't, what's, what is the lie? Where, where am I going? What's, who's, what's happening? And we'd be like, it's okay. It's okay, Dante, step back. Take a minute, take a minute. It was so, I have these like incredible memories of those, <laughs> those things. So that was I always my favorite fast. part. I'm always like, why didn't you feel? He like, gets you, lost. Slow down, slow down. We're like, just cool off, buddy. Take two, take two. <laughs> my bad. I got too excited. I wish we'd had recording of that, please. Please, yeah. please. I'm a, Andrea, this is a deal. So I'm a stander, all right? There's, there's, when you yeah. voice Yeah, record, I'm a sitter. Big sit, yeah, never, They're never mostly a sitters. I'm a stander. But I'm a stander. I'm a stander. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like to get into it. I'll stand up a little bit. Mm -hmm. But then I look at Gray and she's so calm sitting down. <laughs> all sitting. <laughs> I was going to say, I think for me, like every time I would go in, they'd play, you know, the, the last time I was in. And I'm like, who the hell is that? I don't sound that dark and creepy. So it would take me like, I don't know, 10 minutes kind of get down to where I had no feeling and no anything. <laughs> so that was memorable for me. Thank you so the very, much. The very final episode was also cool because that was where the most of us were at one time to record. I actually recorded a lot by myself because I was in school. <laughs> so I, I had to come after school and leave early and whatever. So um, it was cool because there were like nine of us in the booth that day. So we got to go through pages and pages of dialogue just kind of at once. And it felt like alive for a second. So for me, that was like... 
the most, I think, locked in memory from my 13 year old self because it was like, mm. we're all here doing it live. It's so cool. So well, we'd probably be waiting for Jack a little yeah, bit. Probably. <laughs> probably. We're all here at the same time. We was like, wait, <laughs> Jack here yet? And then we'll, we'll start when Jack gets here. Well, you showed up five minutes late with your motorcycle helmet, so, you know. Oh. <laughs> I had a crush on him. It was fine. It's good. <laughs> I think Who doesn't? Who did it? Yeah, how could you not? How can we Is not? So she. Right. That's really why we're all here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you so very much. You're welcome. I really Thank love you. these characters. Thank you for coming today so we could all meet you in such a great Thank group. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> There's like four um, bending elements as well as subcategories, but let's say if you were able to create your own original bending style, what would you base it off of? Cabbages. <laughs> right? Of course. It makes sense. I don't think we can talk about that. Cabbage bending. Uh, that next next. Ball next. making. <laughs> borscht making. Oh, God. The, the possibilities are just endless. So. <laughs> Missed opportunity. I would base mine off psychology, so it would be mind bending. Yeah. Uh, hair bending, because you know that would yeah. make life a lot easier in the morning. Some hair bending, that would be. Yeah. yeah. I would food bend, where I would bend the food all right onto my plate. <laughs> you know, for 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 myself, I've always been a very a big fan of elbow bending. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Zuko was a character that was more written in at the last minute. How do you think that would have affected the show and your character if? It, if he wasn't in the show at all. I mean, it's Sorry, Zuko's, it's Zuko's... I wouldn't be here. I think it would have been a way better show, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, who would I be in a... I think me and Ty Lee would be together or something. Mm. Yeah. Oh, fire! Just saying. Well, I'm like, who would, ever, who would we all have had a crush on? I mean, Aang we love, but also, like, he's, you know, he was, like, the bad boys, you Sokka know? Sokka got a lot of girls. It would have been Sokka Jen. got a lot of girls. Sure, Sokka. Aww. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Asuki. my bad, my bad. I forgot. Every, you're my brother. That would be gross. Let the hair down. Sorry, <laughs> Let that hair down, Sokka. You know. <laughs> but it's Zuko's show, right? It's not really yeah. Aang's show. I mean, it's, it's Zuko's transformation. It's his arc. It's really his journey. I mean, there is, there is no show without Zuko, no. right? No. I don't know. To me. Uh, honestly... I, I think that Zuko's transformation arc, his redemption arc, the only redemption arc I can think of that is greater is Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> you know, seriously. You know. Thank you so much. Thank you. No, was there ever a line or scene while filming Avatar that you felt really resonated with your own personality? Oh my gosh, my, my mother. <laughs> My, my, my mom and I, just, it, sometimes we get along and then years go by, we don't talk. She's got some, there's some, anyway. Um, but my own mother thought I was a monster. She was right, of course, but it's still her. So I am sort of. Um, lots of them. Uh, I feel like um, many of us can, can, can take a lot away from our characters, which is cool, because that happens when you're an on-screen actor and when you're you know, in a play, in a musical, and you're kind of with your castmates, but it's cool when it happens in animation as well, and that's a tribute to Mike and Brian, of course, and the incredible characters they created, but uh, I definitely feel a sense of a comfort um, in Toph back then. It didn't feel like I was really stepping too much outside of myself. And as I've gotten older, I kind of realize some of the issues with some of that and like the fierce independence that she was so just determined to have. And you know, I carry my own weight and whatever. And it's like, yeah. no girl, you need friends. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, use your friends. Uh, and so, so there were a couple lines there, you know, especially in, in the chase early on, you know, when she and Katara were, you know, sugar queen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we were butting heads and she was off having, you know, tea with, with Iroh and she was like, wow, you know, it's, it's really nice to have people who are looking out for you and it's okay to like trust those people and like coming back and like realizing that you have to, you know, it's a little scary, trust the people around you. And then by the end, it's like, do you really think friendships can last more than one lifetime? And she's like, yeah, I'm going to like have these friends. And then she's like, kind of comforted by that. So anyway, it's, her little arc has been cool as I've grown up too, so I found a lot of solace in, in those moments where she had to be vulnerable. So yeah. 
it's also like, you know, this show was one of the first, I having done like a lot of cartoon shows and stuff, and especially when I was little, it was like one of the first shows I'd encountered where the, you know, Mike and Brian had a set amount of episodes that they were going to do. They yep. were not going to be pressured into doing any more. Nope. Um, they were like, it, and you know, it was one of the first shows where a lot of times networks want you to have the ability to just pop into an episode and it doesn't matter the backstory or what's coming. It's, you know, you don't have to have seen the rest of them because it's easier for them to air and this was like the one of the first shows where there was such growth and like change even in every single episode and like it is always the mark of a really special project when the characters grow and change and you don't you don't feel like they have to stay the same or you know so I feel like that to me was like really inspirational and I think you know as far as at least for me as far as Katara goes it was like one of the first like really super powerful strong women that you know I had seen like in a in a cartoon or that I'd been able so to many voice. So strong women in this Yeah, show. there's a, like, yeah, it was like nonstop. It was so, it was like such an empowering situation there. And I think, you know, it just inspired for me a lot of all the scenes. It wasn't even anything specific, but the arc of like her and her like deep, fierce loyalty and love and like wisdom and her need to grow and, and change and understand. I, that to me was something that like, I still carry that with me as like an inspiration for, you know, who I want to be personally. You know, uh, Iroh makes everybody a better version of themselves, from, mm -hmm. from Prince Zuko yeah. to Cheers. fans, yes. to, to me. Actually, he's actually touched my own life, certainly as I live Iroh adjacent all these years. <laughs> and and you, I, I tell this story a lot, but it was uh, my wife and I had moved from California where we'd lived 30 years back in 2020, and we moved back to New Mexico where I was born. And we arrived on March 1st, 2020. Fantastic timing. <laughs> So it's two weeks, about two weeks later, three weeks later, we're at the height of it. People are freaking out, and I'm tired of the news. I just go out for a walk, you know, when I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, my, I have a daughter in, in Pasadena and a son in New York, and we've left them to the wolves, and there's no toilet paper, and we're all gonna die, and this is terrible. <laughs> and I heard birds singing. And very clearly in my head, I heard Iroh's voice. It's from Korra, not from Avatar, but he was saying, if you look for the light, you will often find it. If you look for the dark, that is all you will ever see. And from that point on, throughout the it was sort of my touchstone. I could go back to that line, no matter how bad things got, you know, and I would look for the light. It's a conscious choice, and Iroh taught me that. You know, the light is all around us. Light envelops us. It's easy to find the light. Even at night, you can find the light, and you can look up to the stars, but you have to to look for it. Mm -hmm. And once you make the active choice to look for the light, I promise you, you will find it. I did, and I, I thank Iroh for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So my question is, is just kind of, what was it like having such intense sibling dynamics with you know, people that aren't your family? You know, I, I'm, I'm an only child, uh, and so for me, <laughs> a part of you know, what I love about being an actor is being able to step into all these different roles, you know, have all these different lives that I never would have been able to have otherwise. And a big part of that is, you know, I found my family doing projects like this. And I mean, like, I... <laughs> I love Jack. I've been obsessed with Jack since day one. I mean, how can you not love him? I truly like, and to this day, he is like one of the best, most solid, kind, considerate. Like I was just saying, I was like, he's somebody who's always watching for every single possibility to make to make sure that everyone's being taken care of or considered. Like he's so extremely considerate and kind and also just really funny. And so for me, like I think him and I like immediately connected and got super close and so it really was like having, you know, a, a family member with you pretty much right away, Yeah, you know? Um, which is not exactly the sibling dynamic. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was a different dynamic. It was this like beautiful, close yes. sibling. Yeah, it was more, um, yeah, but I agree. Yes. Uh, yeah, May and I just hit it off immediately. Yeah. Um, and I love the Katara Saka dynamic. I really enjoy how much they play with sort of like, the, uh, the, the, they, they play with the like big brother, little sister dynamic a lot, making Katara often more Responsible, often and smart. How about Not always. Every yeah. single. Well, there was a planner. Time. He had good ideas. Every there were good ideas. <laughs> I'm a very annoying younger brother. I have a I have a four year older sister, and I just lived to torment her. Uh, and so, getting to kind of play, I kind of 
think we brought that energy, even though it was a, I was an older brother. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. I was an only child mostly. I mean, my parents had children with other other partners later, but I, but I pretty much that wasn't until I was older. Um, and, but the most beautiful sibling thing that I hear from fans coming up is how how this show bonded them to their siblings. Which I mean, one girl said, "I you know my my brothers and I like didn't get along at all, and we fought constantly. But then we started watching this show together, and it just bonded us in this way that." And another girl was getting something signed for her brother that. They're still really close now. It's her only brother, but she was like, we probably wouldn't even be friends now as adults. We would have gone off in our own way, but in high school, we started watching this show, and now we're like best of friends, which I was like, oh my God, that's so beautiful. Anyway. And I mean, I have a lot of brothers and a sister, and um, my little sister is pretty powerful, and I'm, I'm a little scared of her. I'm not going to lie. And so it's very easy to play that. But... Um, <laughs> But also with Gray, we, all, we hit it off immediately, and I just love being in the room with Gray working. It's like my favorite days of doing the show, because she's just so, just amazing. And also, strangely, she's always been very sisterly to me. <laughs> she's the reason why I started doing cons. She made me, you gotta start doing these cons. <laughs> Thank you. Other things in life, she's like giving me advice all like the time. Like money? Okay. <laughs> she's always like giving me sisterly advice, which I, I'm like, oh, Azula's okay. <laughs> I hate when his, long, his line is longer than mine, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. It's my favorite thank show you. ever. Really quick, I wanted to say something about the, the, the empowered women on this show, because I started working with May when I was like 22 or something, and she was just a little girl, and we were doing pretty much a show that Johnny Bravo, which was all about just... <laughs> Like five, five, four or five. It, it, yeah, you were just tiny. Yeah. And it was so cute because she was wearing these jelly bracelets the first day I met her. And I was like, I was like, I love your bracelets, you know, because we were the two youngest people on the show, even though I was like, you know, an adult. But and she was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. The best thing about them is they're so comfortable. <laughs> like, that's so what a cute. freak. I love her. <laughs> what a little weirdo. Oh. I, got, I used to get in trouble for saying inappropriate things in front of her because to me she was like my you know she was like just a co-worker who was super mature and her dad was like you cannot say things like that in front of my daughter I was like I'm sorry anyway but uh, that Johnny Bravo was pretty much just about like a guy sexually harassing women the yeah, entire episode so, actually oh how far we came with Avatar yes <laughs> It's true. But, you know, it was, it's amazing. Also, again, like, I grew up working with people like Gray and working with everybody here, like, and it's such a tight-knit community, like, the voiceover community, and you really get to know everybody, and it is like a, it's like a family. You really get, you grow up with these people, and you, like, become friends and, and family, and, like, so I learned so much about everything, good and bad and, and <laughs> dirty, <laughs> pretty much, from these people, so, you know, I, and I turned out okay. I turned out, like, medium okay. So, you know. <laughs> You're very sturdy. Thanks. <laughs> Emotionally. No, you've really changed. Those bracelets don't look very comfortable. They're not. They're you've not. changed. And now I'm into uncomfortable bracelets, okay? <laughs> I'm a rebel. So, what was the call like when you got the call about the, the book for Suki? So, back in the day when we used to have to go to our agent's office to <laughs> record and drive 3,000 times a week, um, we would go audition, and I said, oh, okay, well, Jenny, you have this, uh, you have this audition for this sh show called Avatar. I was like, okay, cool, you know, go in, read my lines, you know, she's this young warrior, and I was like, I don't know, okay, here we go. And so I was like, okay, and they said, oh, you have a call back, maybe like a, I don't remember what it was, maybe a couple weeks later, and it was the first time I had gone to Nickelodeon. And so Nickelodeon, which is in Burbank, California, looks like a rainbow threw up in it. <laughs> and basically I go and I was like, oh gosh, you know, and I see like tons of people. It, it looks literally like it's, it's just going like this. <laughs> and plus, when there's so many people, it's like this. And so I see Dante, I think I remember seeing you, Dante. It's like, hey, Dante. He's like, hey, Jenny. I'm like, what are you here for? I'm like, um, I don't know, some guest spot here. He's like, okay, cool, cool, you know. And I was like, okay, see you later, you know. So I go in and, you know, I read for the creators and the producers and it went great. And typically, you know, when you're just auditioning for some part, you never know. Mm -hmm. And so then I, I think it was just a couple days later they called and they said, oh, you booked the role of Suki. And I said, cool. You know, I'm the type of person where I don't get super excited until like afterwards because I'm like, 
I don't want to jinx it. Yeah. I, I'm gonna, they're gonna fire me, ah! you know, like as an actor. But um, <laughs> so what was cool was that because of all of you guys, like it was only supposed to be a guest star and I kept getting called back and back. And so every single time they would call me back, I'd be like, whoa. And what I realized was when I was on tour, they would rent out studios, which today it's nothing. We all have our own studios. But back in the day when I was on the road, they would, they would find some little studio in Podunk, you know, I don't know where. And I was like, wow, they could have recast me. So I'm so grateful that I'm here. And I love all these people up here. And we're very, very lucky for all of you guys. So thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. I was going to say that recasting, I've done probably three or four things where I just came right in. And I think this was one of them. I think I just came right in and was like, oh, hi, I see humans. And, and there's usually like a little mouth and they give you a little beep and you have to just like Cricket. try to sink your mouth up to that. Cricket, weren't you, because I, they must have cast somebody else for time because I did and my same with May. episodes to picture. And same. And did too. And I just thought it was some anime dub. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is cool. I'll be out of here in a day. Yeah, and then I was, I was like, oh, she's, because I could see it. I was like, she's pink, so she's going to sound like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah, so there are some recasts. So Jenny, you're right. It's like that, that does show your, you know, talent and, and how much people loved you. Oh, the person who lost this part is probably so depressed right now. I know. <laughs> Let's find them and torture them. Yeah. It's probably someone like Julia Roberts. Who cares? She's fine. All the mean girls are talking to each other now, you guys. All the mean girls are just talking to each other. <laughs> Have you ever done chakra trainings, like meditations? From Guru Pati? Last yeah. night We're to go back LA, to sleep. So yeah. I did it yesterday yeah. on my lunch break. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was, and you know, by the way, like a huge part of this show, it's not like we just came in and we're like, whatever. <laughs> there was like, there was like Kung Fu lessons yeah. and meditation specialists and like experts and elements and all these different things. Like they were like, we are going to make this legit. We are going to learn all about it. There was like literally in the wildness of Nickelodeon, which is actually <laughs> like this when you're in there, it's like all different colors yeah. and it's crazy. There's a basketball court. And oh, I fun. remember, do you remember that we were yeah. doing like Kung Fu? In, yeah, yeah, in like the, on the basketball court. And awesome. it's like that, that's, you know, you never yeah. get that. You yeah. just start guessing at stuff. And but, Brian yeah. wanted to like learn all of it yeah. as they were animating yeah. it. So he was like deep, oh, cool. deep in study with, yes. yeah. Nice. Yeah, we yeah. love it. Yeah. Extra thick. Good job. <laughs> what was the audition process like for each of you as you were heading into your roles as Avatar, in Avatar? I mean, I like kind of Jenny was saying like, we can audition for a dozen projects a week, you know, or something. And so it's just like any other audition, really. When, when you audition for something, unless it's an existing property, like, we don't know what it is. We don't know what it's going to be. And mm -hmm. so you do these things. You send them into the ether, mm -hmm. you know. And when you audition, you're not auditioning, unless it's a callback, for creators or anything. So it's just a guess. It's a stab in the dark. You hope yeah. you're pitching them the right age or the right frequency or, or you know, tonally correct. And, uh, yeah, and you just hope your voice doesn't remind someone of their ex-wife. And, and <laughs> ah, I don't or know. if it's for Azula, that it does remind someone of their ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> But I was going to say, like, now that we don't drive a thousand miles and you can just do it from home, it's great because I can listen to it and be like, oh, I don't know that that's what... They I mean, you can have a little more fun, you know giving the take that you want them to receive. And we were lucky because our voiceover director, um, Andrea Romano, who's like Woo! in a brilliant Imagine. genius and we love her and she was with us every step of the way and like she is has always been a big champion for us and I mean I've known her since I literally was a baby. She's like my godmother. She's one of my mom's best friends so it was really wonderful. It really like lent the family vibe especially for us when we were in there and she was really able to help explain to us as we went you know keep things moving but also make us understand what it was and bring out the best emotions. So I feel like having a, a good voice director is really an important piece. Okay. Yeah. 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 And as you far never as know. journey goes, we're, oh. You, you never know. Like when you're, you're starting, every, every audition you go for, you just do it. Yeah. Like literally, Z, I mean, Zuko's cool now. When I walked in the room, I was like, Who, who's this ponytail guy with me? <laughs> <laughs> The scar? <laughs> what am I yelling? What, I'm gonna do what? Okay. <laughs> What's his name? Zuko? I was like, like Danny Zuko? Yes, Danny Zuko, baby. 
I was like, I mean, you never, like, you don't know. You just kind of do your thing, and then what the work we do, they'll, we'll know if it's good like 10 years from now. I, I, I think they wanted an on camera, like a bigger name for my character, but, and I auditioned for it, and then I didn't hear anything for months and months and months. And finally, they had me come, and they said, Great, you were the only person who didn't yell when you did the audition, because I guess a lot of people were, were like playing her really angry, like, you know, and just like yelling at everybody. But God, she'd just be hoarse by the end of it. Um, <laughs> but I just remember that. They said, You were so creepy when you said that. I, I was like, Maybe you should worry less about the tides who've already made up their mind about killing you, and more about me who's still mulling it over. And it was just sort of like, You have to be. Be like real, like it's it's creepier when you're just like yeah. offhand with it. <laughs> you know? I just thought she's so powerful; she doesn't need to yell at anybody. Yeah, yeah. And you, you know, you you really never know how th- you know. As Iroh says, destiny is a funny thing. You never know how things are going to work out. It can be the most random thing sometimes. For me, when I was a kid, I loved musicals, and so mm-hmm. for my birthday and for Christmas, I would ask for vinyl records, vinyl records back in the old days <laughs> of musicals that were on Broadway at the time. Yeah, that actually did start Camelot, the Music Man. And for my 17th birthday, my parents gave me an album from a Sondheim musical called Pacific Overtures. It was 1977, and it opened in New York, and it starred an actor named Tamako Aramatsu. And I love this musical. I could sing the entire score for you right now. In fact, I will sit back. It's going to be a while. But, I mean, from the first time I heard his voice, and I would sit in my room and sing along with this record, note for note, over and over and over again. And it's so random because in 2006, when I got, they were looking for a Mako sound alike, mm. uh, I did not know what I had actually been doing all those years was working on an impression of Mako Iwamatsu. Uh. So you never know how random life is going to be because literally, if my parents had given me a different album, That's right. literally like someone Daddy else, Paul. yes, I, yeah, yeah, indeed, someone else would be sitting up here right now. So you just literally, you never know where, where destiny is going to lead you, you know? Okay. Thank you all so much. Thank you. My question is for Jack. Um, so your other show, The Dragon Prince, there is a bunch of Avatar references. Yes. Were you involved in that in any way? <laughs> I was not. I was not involved. I got. Um, I got to approve doing like Sokka boomerang <laughs> joke. Aaron, so Aaron Ehas uh, is one of the creators of uh, Dragon Prince and was the head writer of, that, of Avatar. And so he pulled me aside, like, while they were writing that script, like, a couple of episodes earlier, he pulled me aside and was like, we want to do this joke. Does this feel fun or icky? <laughs> and we agreed fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I find a boomerang. Yeah, tell us. And I have <laughs> sort of, I transcend through lives. Yes, 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 yes right. No right. cabbages? No cabbages. No cabbages. <laughs> yet, yet. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I had an Iro in my life for a very short period of time, unfortunately, like till a T. Um, and dealing with those like underlying heavy story beats um, that all of your characters had to deal with, did you have any idea how much of an impact those story beats would have on people? No. Honestly, I think we all knew, when we knew it was a beautifully written show when we were doing it. We knew this is a great show. But when the show was over, the show was over. You went and looked for another job. For me, it wasn't until I started coming to these events and fans would come up to me and they would say, you know, I didn't have a father figure in my life uh, or I was going through this dark patch in my life and Uncle Iroh's advice got me through this. And that's when I started going, wow, there is something else going on with this. And, and, you know, really, I cannot think of another animated program that had such an impact in the real world as Avatar has had on people's lives. And, and what a blessing that is, right? You know, to be involved with something like that. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what was your favorite thing about working on uh, the show, Avatar? Working with my friends. Sorry, but it's true. We love each other still. It's amazing. It's very rare that you still want to hang out with people after you work with them for so long. And I feel like we all do. Yeah. Lucky. Thank you. Awesome. Thank Yay, you. Thank and, uh, you. What food would you want from the Avatar universe if you could have it? There's an Avatar cookbook. Oh like warm soup. I like like all those little steamy soups. Like I know I was supposed to learn the lesson not to, but I would want to eat a saber tooth moose lion cub. It looks <laughs> delicious. Cactus juice. Cactus juice. Cherries with no pits. Yay. <laughs> Sorry for this sassy question in advance, but this question's for Kataro, Tavsuko, and Spirit Iro. How does it feel being the only members to make it to Korra? Oh! 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 
shot fired. Feels great. <laughs> they were cool. I mean, I went, to, I went to the new crew and I was like, we already did this, you guys. We already saved the world. How y'all gonna do it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was in court. I played Ming Hua and um, Young Bei Fong and uh, the spirit mushroom and the dark spirit. But I'm glad I don't, I don't cosplay Ming Hua because I can't sign autographs with no arms. <laughs> favorite line that you guys said? Oh God, quick. Yeah, you miscalculated. I love Zuko more than I fear you. <laughs> I was never angry with you. I was sad because I thought you had lost your way. I must capture the Avatar and regain my honor. <laughs> Don't flatter yourself. You were never even a player. Drink cactus juice, it'll quench you, nothing's quenchier, it's the quenchiest. I am the greatest earthbender in the world, and don't you two dunderheads ever forget it. <laughs> that cloud is so poofy, it's like, poof. <laughs> I am a warrior, but I'm a girl too. <laughs> I will never, ever turn my back on the people I love. <laughs> my, oh, never mind. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, God. everybody. Thank you, Thank you to our guests. We'll be at the Thank day. you Come so much, there. Cricket and Glenn and Dante and Gray and Jack and Olivia and Jesse and May and James. Thank you so much.